Hi, I'm Randy Simmons for Ion Arts. Glad you guys can join us today. I'm in downtown Lower Town, Paducah, and we are in front of Mars, Studio Mars, and that's on 418th North 7th Street. Uh, this is Paul Lorenz's uh, home and studio, and Paul has invited us to come in and check out some of his paintings. He does a lot of paintings, and some are drawings, uh, mixed media works, a little bit of abstract expressionistic uh, um, concept thrown in, uh, really interesting work, so let's go check it out. Hello, Paul. Randy, this welcome. Is, thank you, thank you. This is Paul Lorenz, by the way. He's a lower town artist, and we're at the Mars Studio in downtown Paducah. Thank you, Paul, for allowing us to come into your studio. Well, I'm glad you came by today. This was a nice surprise. And we are we're glad to have you. Um, behind us is some of your recent work. This is all recent from October. That's kind of the name of the whole series is October. October series. I had this idea of reinvestigating some, the idea of line drawings I had done in the past. But to look at the oil paintings that I've been doing and, and look at line in a different way, look at line as a, as a, as a veil, as a series of, of creating events, um, so once I got started, it's like this is really about two weeks worth of work. Just like, go. Just <laughs> well, one idea is, going into the next idea. This is an interesting juxtaposition of all this abstract sort of uh, um, pattern work in the background. And it looks haphazard. And over that is all this structured uh, line work that's taken place. And that's an interesting uh, set of ideas occurring in one, one work. Well, there's. That idea, that haphazard, that, that randomness happens in all of my paintings at some point. It's just a matter of how I was going to get this to work with mm -hmm. the structure of the line drawings, which is very pure and very direct. And this is something that's been going on for numerous years already, the, how to get the, the visual structure which to me is very architectural, which is my background. Right. And then how to integrate that with something painterly. And it's just been something I've been battling for quite a long time, that finally just letting the ideas go and just doing a lot of things, it's, it's slowly coming and becoming something. I'm not at the point of acknowledging this as being valid or good or bad or anything yet. It's just a series of events that happened and now I'm kind of looking at it and figuring out what I like and what I don't like and, and how to proceed with it now. You mentioned background and this, maybe it's a good time to tell us about your background. You mentioned architecture. Uh, so what, what got you into art? Well, I've always even from a little kid, I've always been painting and drawing and doing things. But it wasn't until I was in high school where I actually started working with oil paint. I had, mysteriously, there was one art class, I was able to take it, and we worked with oil. And I was instantly hooked on that material. When I went to college, though, I studied architecture, which was something, another thing I have a great respect for. And since architecture, I was very fortunate to go to the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago, which is a very specific Bauhaus-influenced school. You, you learn um, glass and steel, a, a very strict aesthetic that came from Germany in the early 20th century. So having that kind of background, which is very technical, um, then trying to bring painterliness into that, because painting is a completely different right. way of creating an image and creating an object, um, it has taken a while. And working as an architect, painting was always the, the foil to that. Because if I'm sitting at a drafting board all day long, drawing right angles and drawing things, mm -hmm. coming home and doing something explosively painterly was the perfect outlet for it. Now, having been a professional artist for the past 10 years and not in architecture, I kind of miss that structure of drawing 
And now the drawings have become the foil to the painting. It's like I don't want to be just explosively doing things. I need some structure also. So this is kind of this, this balance that, that has to work together. Otherwise, nothing happens. So Th that's a really nice balance that you have. And it's interesting how you're, you're, you're marrying your uh, early history. With, uh, well, well, your early history is painting. Uh, your, your next segment of life is, is architecture, and it's such a great balance of, of both of those. I know. It's, a lot of people ask me, like, who's your, as a painter, who are your influences? And I really don't really look at painting that much. I look at architecture. I find that really inspiring. And I think that's partially because of architects always looking for new technology, always looking for new materials to use and how mm -hmm. to um, how to exploit the newness and what the, those materials can mm. do. And I try to do that with paint also. I'm, I don't really consider myself a painter because I don't care about all the techniques and all of the trappings that go with oil painting. I like oil paint and then try to push it into other realms and other limits so that it may not even seem like oil any longer. Because these are all these pieces are all oil, um, but when you remove as much of it as you can, you know the graphite still has a way of keeping its own yeah. voice and its own territory in all of this. So, well, these are very beautiful works. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, another thing too is the the, the drawings. Or I'm sorry, the paintings. Well, that, I guess they could be drawings in a sense. They can be. They can be. I like. I look at this painting. It's an oil on panel, but this is. I consider it a drawing. It just has zero lines. Mm -hmm. This one has fifteen hundred lines. This one has zero lines. And you it's counted really those, about drawing. You counted those lines. Draw, the, counting the lines is a major part of the drawing process. That's how I determine when I'm going to stop, or how spatially something um, takes up space. Like this amount, I don't remember offhand how many lines are there, but it's probably about 800 lines. Wow. You know, that's what 800 lines looks like. And I kind of gauge things by that. Well, that's an interesting part of, of uh, the process as well as is counting the lines as you layer those in. It, is, it becomes a, an interesting mindset to be in when you're counting lines and make, making them and counting them at the same time. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not painting, where it's, painting is more about color mm -hmm. and color relationships. Right. This is more um, uh, spatial relationships. The lines in relationship to the rectangle or the square it's on, the color is, mm -hmm. is not as important. The works behind me are just a little bit different. Well, this is a different experiment. Um, for the past year or so, I've been working a lot with black ink mm -hmm. and trying to explore all the different facets that ink has. These four paintings are oil that I've been manipulating to act as ink, to be very fluid and very liquidy but keeping the um, saturation of oil paint. Mm -hmm. So it's been a lot of chemistry experiments to, to, to see how I can make this happen. There's a lot of texture look to this. I mean, I want to take my hands and rub across mm -hmm. the surface. I better not, but that's what it looks <laughs> yeah, like. That it's could be dangerous. It is, and it's partially the materials. Um, I, I use very big, fat, old brushes to apply this paint. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of control. There's a lot of solvents involved to soften mm -hmm. and loosen the pigments. So I'm setting up this painting. I'm setting up this series of events on the painting, and then I really have to walk away and wait to see what's going to happen with it. Um, and, and to me, that's very them. architectural to me because you do architects do that a lot. You're setting up this series of materials. Okay, right. I'm going to do something with steel columns. How many do I ultimately need? How big do they need to be? It's all there, there's always this element of experimenting and risk with it. Mm -hmm. Making one decision ultimately alters how the end is going to look. 
and changing one thing in this will alter how the ultimate image changes. So in my mind, there's a lot of correlation between these two ideas, of, between architecture and, and painting. So what about so. placement on the wall? Uh, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption that with the, way the, the grid work that you have laid out, that placement, how you exhibit your paintings, plays into that. It is very um, important. Um, the grid that's here, um, I've been doing a, a series of installation pieces, which are very small squares. Again, very architectural. Mm -hmm. They're very rigidly placed. And I had one on the wall here. And I really liked the way all the little nails looked. So I, <laughs> I left them up there. And now I just, whatever I want to look at, especially you know, an entire, you know, the month of October on the wall here, it's nice to use that. But I like that grid system a lot. Mm -hmm. All of these, there's a rhythm to it that to me is very architectural. It's like windows. There's a logic behind it. Mm -hmm. There's a logic behind the way I want people to, to, to enter the work and see the work and proceed through the space through the space as well. So. so as we come down further here, it's basically the same process, mm -hmm. uh, the same thought. These materials. were all these were all started on the same day. This was in, I believe it was September twenty sixth is the the day I started all of these. I could never so. remember that about my own work. I don't know when they started. Well, I don't give anything titles any longer. The title is basically the day and time okay. that it started. I'm never quite sure when they're going to end, but I know when they start. So that's the most important thing to me. And all four of these were started on the same day. So it was a day of, of manipulating the oil mm -hmm. and watching it and maneuvering with it, whether I'm maneuvering the paint or maneuvering mm -hmm. the the panels, it's me setting up this series of events and then trying to control it in some way. So a factor of time is, is interesting. Time yeah. is extremely important. There's, time to me is really one of the, really the most important things because ultimately all paintings are just a chronicle of time. Mm -hmm. Whether you're working on something for an entire year or you're working on something for 30 seconds, it captures that moment, the, the moment of the artist's um, desire, the moment of his, his, his idea coming to, to life. So I'm, I'm finding art with titles to be a little bit too manipulative mm -hmm. and a little too, I don't know, it's just, I, I'm not enjoying having titles. I don't want that much information right. given to me. Well, I like the, the, the mystery to it. I mean, it's just, it's just a date. It's like a, it's like a diary of what you have done. Exactly. And everything time. has, you know, this one is 2.51 okay. p.m. <laughs> well, you do. You've so, got the dates on these. Yeah, because I have to know when, they, you know when everything happens. So I have a journal where when I start things, I sketch everything up and I put the times so all that information is I've got, just to make sure I remember. That's interesting. It's, it, it's a, it is a process. And Very much. And, and you're recording every, every moment, every step. Of yeah. That. A lot of things I will hang in chronological order so mm -hmm. that the, the viewer sees the beginning to the end of the whole process. So to get, keep that accurate, I need to know exactly when things happened. So it, it's, a, it's more than just making the visual image. I mean, that's very important and very fun, but it's also the whole life of the work and when it happened. And then in years to come, you can chronicle, you know, a year ago, mm -hmm. a year ago, those pieces happened and Correct. now this happened. Well, let's take a look at these pieces that you were just talking about. Well, Randy, these paintings behind us are really probably the most important in the room because this started the whole idea of working on ink. And this started ink and time and actually temperature. Because the bottom three I did during the ice storm in 2008. Yeah, it was 2008. Or no, it was, no, no, it was 2009. 2009. That's right. <laughs> the, and they're in chronological order. This was January 27th, January 28th, and then January 30th. 
And I did these in the studio when there was no power and there was no heat. So the ink started doing some interesting things with the cold, which I never acknowledged until this moment. The ones above I did trying to recreate the coldness um, after the heat has, had come back on and me trying to manipulate temperature by myself resulted in ink doing these kinds of things. So there, there are definitely um, pieces that go together. But it, that idea of, of ink and temperature and time has led mm -hmm. to all of these other works. What's and interesting it, is that this bottom row looks like smoke damage in, in a sense. Ooh, it looks like, like, a, like something's caught on fire and, and that smoke has rolled across the, uh, maybe a ceiling. Uh, that's interesting, and it, that's interesting because that, that requires heat, but yet these are about not heat and right. about cold. And the thing working with ink also, when ink's wet, it's black. You don't, mm -hmm. under, you don't know the saturation of it until it starts drying, because all of these pieces look black when they're wet. I, I, until they start drying, I don't know mm. what the values are going to be or what's happening. So again, the, the experiment in this, it's like you set up the series of events and then I kind of have to wait and see how to proceed as the piece gives me the knowledge of how to, to move on with it. But I was completely surprised, so I just stopped. It's like, <laughs> okay, well, hold on to you guys for now, and then try to try to recreate this again to see if if it can happen. And it didn't. So, well, well these oh, well. are these are beautiful, and they oh, and they hang you. very well together. So I I can't wait to see your studio. Well, then we should go see the studio. All right. Well, then let's do that. Okay. And this is your studio space. This is the studio where I work. This is the work zone. This is like a real painter's studio. And you gotta tell me, how did you get to Paducah and come up with this wonderful studio space? Well, I came here because I heard about the artist relocation program and it sounded intriguing. Um, I had been living uh, in near San Francisco in Berkeley and it was time for a change, um, professionally and geographically. And though I have to admit, Paducah was not on my long list or short list of places to move to. Hearing about the relocation program and actually visiting here, it was an adventure and it sounded interesting. And I knew in California I was never going to have the chance to own property and design a house and design a studio that was really perfect for what I wanted to work in. So it just made sense to, to try Paducah out. I'm originally from Chicago, so it was also nice okay. to be able to just hop in the car and drive there um, if I wanted to, rather than having to buy a plane ticket and all of, all of that. So it just, it just seemed like a good it seemed like a good idea and it seemed like an adventure and there are so many other artists coming yeah. here also. That energy is always just a good thing to have as well. So it was time for a change and Paducah, Kentucky. And here you are. Yeah. And, and, and here I am. And yeah. you're an architect so you designed your own studio as well. Yeah, it was, it took a little bit of time to really think about how I wanted to store things and how big did I want to work on things? How much workspace, how much square footage do you really need to maneuver to work on things? But I'm slowly outgrowing actually. Well, but well you are. I mean, there, there are, there is work everywhere and even your drop cloth is a, is a work of art and you said uh, earlier that before the interview started that, that it's actually going to be a work of art. It is. This is five years worth of information on the drop cloth right now and within the next month it's going to come up and get cut up and stretched. Something's going to happen with mm. it. I'll probably wash it and then see what information is left. No, don't wash it. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to wash it. Um, but that'll be good because there's a lot of ink, there's a lot of mm. oil, there's glue, there's all kinds of stuff on here and mm. it'll be good then to reevaluate what it could be. So I've got my new drop cloth all ready to go. So. 
And it's you fantastic. also have some new works out on this, on this and table. And new work, yeah. I've been working a lot on these really thin panels. And it's, I'm not sure right now, I've just been working on these the past couple of days. I'm really not sure where these are going or, or, or what the story is with them. Because they, some of them just dried this morning. So Wow, so this is very fresh. This is very fresh, yeah. But I'm really liking a lot of the imagery in it. It's, it's very kind of seductive. Whenever you get all these really luscious kind of curves and, and things, it's very seductive. I like what's going on. And this is board on, on a masonite? Mm -hmm. Board. Yeah. And, and this is just simply ink? The, well, the black is ink. The, the beigey, fleshy color is a combination of pigment and casein and matte medium to get it to flow. And it's interesting, you know, you, you put all these materials together and it's very liquidy and fluid. And then when you put it on and you let it dry and do its own thing, I mean, the pigments start to cake in and become their own thing. The water separates and other things happen. And again, this all goes back to the works we were just looking at before as well, this experiment, mm. this play of materials. Instead of you know, just using just ink, it's now ink and another water-based uh, medium. It's not ink, oil paint trying to look like ink, but there, there's relationships, visual and and physical relationships that that bring all of this work together. So it's it's I'm I'm always excited as to what's going to happen because I like having that that moment of having no control. And even when I work on large oil paintings, there's always this moment where the whole painting gets painted white again just to get rid of some of the color, get rid of a lot of that right. and then see what's going to come back and then finish the painting. It, I, I, I don't want to be in control all the time. You have to let things go and then figure out. And then that, that's the challenge of it. I mean, if I'm just going to paint a painting, paint a picture, there's not a whole lot of challenge in that. But when you have to really kind of battle with the materials, and especially on these panels, because a, the, a lot of the water, a lot of the liquid that the pigment is floating in will just slide right off because as much as I thought the floor was really even, gravity is so much stronger. <laughs> you know, one minute it looks like something, and an hour later everything is slid off and it's, <laughs> and it's on the floor. And, so, and you had mentioned painting, and, and behind this is more of a, of a conventional type yes, of painting. Yes, this is just a really pure oil on canvas painting, which I really love that the painterliness of being able to to work on something traditional like that. Mm -hmm. The thing is then always, it's, it's a battle then of being too traditional as we're in the 21st century when traditions are quickly evolving. So sometimes it's, it's really nice to just work on, with oil paint and, and smell the oil and understand the history of where all of this comes from. And then sometimes you can be really bogged down with that and then you, you abandon it and, and work on something else or completely paint things over as well. But this, this piece is pretty much really a, a straight oil painting. I'm trying with, with layers underneath. The layers underneath actually are ink. That okay. The same black ink that I use for everything just to see how it works on a large scale on canvas because mm -hmm. each material it does something else. And I tried to keep the important parts of the, the ink underneath. But paintings have a life of their own. And once you get started, you get started. And things change. And, but I'm, I'm happy with this right now. There's some really wonderful moments that I'm, I'm really glad are still there. And then there's just some big sweeping moments that happened right at the end that you know. Maybe they stay, maybe they don't stay, maybe they evolve into something else. But I'm happy with this piece where it's at right now. So, so but it could change tomorrow. It could. <laughs> <laughs> you always have to keep that option gotcha. open that it could change. But I've got other things that I'm, are actually on my mind more than this. Um, well, so you can work on different projects at the same time. 
I have to. Um, I kind of got into that habit working in San Francisco mm -hmm. because environmentally it's so cold and damp there, at least in my studio I had. Oil paintings would take days and days and sometimes weeks to dry. So I couldn't wait around and not work. So I'd work on one, put it away, start another, and then slowly get through the cycle of wow. when one was dry again. Um, Kentucky, completely different environment. Things dry very quickly here. Um, most of the paint I hand make myself, grinding it from wow. pigments. So I can really control how much oil and how much solvent goes in. So I can get an oil painting to dry overnight if I want it to. If I'm that in need to work on it again that quickly, I can do that. But usually I, it's nice to work on something and put it away mm -hmm. and then take on another idea. So. Well, your, your work is wonderful, and it's no surprise that you are selling your work. And you have a really <laughs> nice gig in, uh, in New York at the Rockefeller Center? The, yes, that was a, a project that came my way um, back in 2006. And it's nice. I finally got to see the painting um, about a year and a half after it was hung there. And Everything looks so different <laughs> when it leaves, when it's in the studio, and then when it's in its final hanging place. It, it, was, it was a great project to work on. Um, I had never worked on a painting that size before. It was four and a half feet wide, but it was 16 feet long. So it, this room is only 20 feet long, so it fit against this wall really nicely to work on. And it was the first time I ever used the computer to use Photoshop to manipulate a composition mm -hmm. at a small scale first and then transpose that onto the larger canvas just That's so I could get a handle on scale. You know, when you're looking at a little sketch, a line does one thing. And then when you try to get that, it's easier to make a pencil line yeah. first to see what the scale is, and then you know how much paint to make and how much, how big the brush needs to be, rather than just dive in without that knowledge. Usually I just kind of dive into paintings, but something that big really needed to be studied right. before starting. So that was, that was a nice exercise for me too, because I'm not exactly Mr. <laughs> Computer Savvy, so. <laughs> Paul, you, you, we could do four or five shows or, or more on you, but unfortunately we're out of time. Oh man. And, uh, maybe you'll have us back again uh, in, in the future? Certainly, certainly. Great. See what else, where all of this evolves to. So. Yeah, there's, there's no telling, so. Thanks again, Paul. Randy, thank uh, you. And we'll, we'll be in touch. All right, sounds good. Well, that was a wonderful visit with Paul Lorenz in Studio Mars in downtown Lower Town Paducah. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did and learned about Paul and his processes. And I hope you can join us next time on Ion Arts.